next speaker is Brian Lyles, otherwise known as Smarticus, at least on his blog, uh, and uh, Brian L on Twitter. And as we've mentioned before today, active, you know, Sarah May talked about how active model is a really interesting new part of Rails 3. And Brian is going to talk about that in his active model extravaganza. So as, um, as, a, as a bonus for my talk at the beginning, um, I just want to give out a little public service announcement. Um, this is Randall Thomas. This is me. This is Randall Thomas. This is me. One more time. Randall Thomas, me. Problem solved. On to the talk. So um, one, of the, one of the most important parts for uh, Rails 3 for me is active model. Um, one of the things I really love that Yehuda and Carl and everyone else on the team did is they went through and they got, they got rid of a lot of the junk and then they made a lot of things a lot more awesome. And one of the things I really love is active model. So let's talk about it. So who here remembers Rails 2.3? And who remembers Active Record from Rails 2.3? Couldn't really do anything with it. It's like, it, it literally is the spaghetti monster, the spaghetti meatball monster. If you ever did, um, dug inside the code, you realize that you really could not extract anything out. So um, basically this talk right here, I'm, I'm gonna dedicate it to Yehuda. Um, so let, let's start off with a little um, appreciation song. Come and listen to a story about a man named Cass. A faithful code hacker, I wonder if he has some cats. The one day he was hacking on some bird, and then someone suggested that he should murder. <laughs> With real that is, good for you, good for me. But the next thing you know, oh, he was put in charge. And the changes he had, damn, damn. they sure were large. The crew kept hacking and I hacking between you and me. I never ever thought that we would see Rails 3. It's released now. I'll eat my words in a sandwich. Well, here we are today with the new Rails 2 hacking one. And you'd like to think you the earth and reach number one. I've been hacking so hard for letters on my keys. I hope all you can make sure you TATFT. That's how the fuck time that is. You can do it. <laughs> so, um. So this brings us to the, to the, the meat of our talk. Um, what is active model? Well, actually, after reading the code, active model is two different things. And what really brought this to light is two years ago at RubyConf down in, I guess, in Florida, um, Yehuda gave this talk about external APIs. And it really, really struck a chord with me. And what we found out is that active model is more than one thing. So let's talk about really what we want. We don't really care about active model. All we want to do is this. We have a helper in Rails or we have, a, we have a partial in Rails, and we're trying to render a form with something in that, in that sound instance variable. What the hell is it? Usually it's gonna be active record. But for some of us who have to use SOAP and like things like Cassandra and things like that, it might not always be. And before in Rails 2.3, we had to come up with a whole bunch of crazy workarounds to make this kind of stuff work. Active model gives us this. And so notice that um, active model gives you the, the instance variable sound, and it also gives you some of the things with um, the label and the text field. And also, for crazy people like me who want to create their own OHMs, object hash mappers, not relational, um, Active Model actually gives me a good set of guidelines of things that I should do to make it work with this case. So basically, what we're trying to do is give me some guidelines to allow me to do my stuff like I want. So um, let's talk about Active Model. So, Active Model, like I said before, is two things. It's a, um, it's a external API, which is just basically a set of guidelines to say you better do this, and if you do this, this crap will work. And it's also a set of awesome helpers. Actually, um, in preparing for this talk, I actually read all the code for Active Model, and if you go download Rails, the so Rails slash Active Model slash lib slash Active Model, you read every single thing in there, there's a whole bunch of gems. I actually think if I'm ever, ever gonna teach people how to code and how to document your code, that's actually gonna be something I'm gonna show people. So let's talk about Active Model. You already used Active Model. Who here uses Active Record in their Rails apps? <laughs> so there you go, you've already used Active Model, but you don't really know you're using Active Model. You're using mostly the external part. You're not using the part that I'm getting ready to talk about. But who here likes SQL? S-E-Q-U-E-L. 
So I love SQL. I like SQL because it's really no frills, and before ARAL, it actually worked. It's actually working for a few years. So what I have here is some code showing SQL. And what I'm doing here is I have a task model, and what I want to do is create a new task model and insert it into the database. Because that's all we want to do is create data and put it in a database. So you know that I've done this, but the problem is, is the way that this is right now, I can't use it in my form helper without a lot of extra work. But you know what? Um, the SQL guys, they took care of us. And I type really slow. I'm getting kind of old, so eh. So there we go. So after I finish typing all this, what you're going to see is um, I've saved it, but it doesn't look Rails-like. Oh, snap. <laughs> So um, how did they do it? And when I say they, I'm, I'm actually going to speak to Yehuda because I personally know this guy and I personally know that he had a big thing to do with it. So if they is someone else in this room or someone else watching this talk in the future time, thank you. So actually, let's think about this. How did they take after Brecker, take the good parts out to allow other people to extend it? And you know what? I got an idea about how this happened. So we have active record over here, very scared in the corner. Uh, and what we have to do is we have Yehuda sitting right here. And what he does is he prays to the God. <laughs> and you guys seem to see pretty much know what happens next year. So they reached into the guts of active record while it was screaming and crying, and they pulled something out. And what did they pull out? Well, you know what it is. It's active model. <laughs> so, that's how active model was born. At least that's how I think it is. Maybe that's not true, maybe it is, I don't know. So, um, in my, whenever I was talking to Josh about this talk, he says, I said, you know what, I'll put some code in it. Normally I don't like code, I like to talk about meta stuff, but I'm gonna do some code today. So what is active model? Active model is a contract. It says that you will do these five things. And it might be a little bit more, but you know, that's what these five things is what I got. All you need to do is say that you have some kind of errors and you can get, this, you can actually have the right messages on errors, you need to respond to a few other things, and then you need to have a method on your class that allows you to do model <laughs> name. That's it, it's actually very, very simple. And believe it or not, you don't actually have to use active model anything to have active model support for your app. All you need to do is implement something that works with this or that. So let's talk about the, help, the helpers, the stuff that's actually in that active model, lib, active model directory. So um, earlier, um, there, was, there was talk in IRC at least about um, Lint. And everyone needs a little Lint in their life. So um, that, um, the Rails guys did us a big favor, and they said, well, if you want something that needs to be active model compatible, well, why don't you just include this little module here? And I don't think you need to do tests. I think you can just get away with lens. I, I do know that. But you know what? I don't use test unit, so, and I use RSpec. And one of the first thing I found is that there was no helpers for RSpec. And there is someone out there who did write it, and unfortunately, I found this code, but I was unable to find it again, so I put it up on this gist, so if you ever go to this gist, I make sure I will make sure that I attribute who wrote this. I did not write this code, but it works with it works with um, RSpec and it makes everybody happy. Oh, duplicate slide. Let's keep moving. So um, one thing I want to say is um, I like talking about testing, and unfortunately this is not a talk about testing. But what I will say is that test all the f and time still lives because look, easy testing, easy testing. And, all, and you know what, anybody here a wrestling fan? So you know who this guy is? Woo! Always gotta give it a little bit of um, Ric Flair. <laughs> so let's talk about how easy it is to test. Dun, 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 dun. There you go, that's test all the fucking time for you, right there. So what else does um, Active Model give you? It gives you attribute magic. And us being Ruby people, we love magic. But this is like real magic. This is magic you can touch. 
So let's talk about some real code. So let's say I was writing an ORM, and I'm sorry to throw so much code at you, but it was so good I couldn't keep it to myself. So um, let's talk about some of the things that active model proper gives you. It gives you this attribute method stuff. So let's say you have a class, you have a class of cows, and you have some attributes on it, and you have your cows have name and your cows have data. All you need to do is do use the define method attributes. It comes out of this active model attribute methods, and then you can define a method called attributes, and guess what? This bad boy looks just like active record. You would not even know what it was um, defined for. And really, the reason I tell you the reason I got into this is because, unfortunately, the real world, at least the real world that I live in, people like to use SOAP. So what I did is I actually did implement active model to um, interface in front of SOAP, actually Saban to be more specific. And what I was able to do was to expose to other developers was something that looked like active record but was coming from some crazy old Windows service on the back side. So let's talk about, next we'll talk about callbacks. Um, I like pictures of phone booths. Um, I don't know what it is about phone booths. Maybe they're red, maybe they have lots of windows, but I like phone booths. So let's talk about callbacks. Um, in Rails, um, <laughs> so in, in Rails, or in, in Active Record, you're able to do um, before create, and you have a whole you have a whole chain of callbacks that you can use. Well, the Active Model helpers gives you ability to create these callbacks in your code. All it is is a couple of extra lines. And notice, all I had to do was extend Active Model callbacks, and then define which block callbacks that I wanted, and then I was able to do the regular role before create do some stuff, because we all do some stuff in our apps. So the next slide here is about naming. Um, and I may actually change this slide up a little bit because um, another IRC conversation. Um, naming. Um, one thing that we we'll always learn, and I've raised this a thousand times, is you'll set an instance variable in a controller in your Rails app, and you'll pass it to form four, and the first thing it'll say is, can't find model name, can't find model name. Well, now we don't have that problem anymore. All you need to do, actually, okay. all you need to do is extend active record naming, no, include active record naming, and you'll actually be able to do code just like this. And actually, the cool thing about it is that you don't have to do any extra work. All it does here is it just um, gets it from the name of the, the class. No extra work. So what's next? Um, we all have errors in our apps. At least you guys have errors in your apps. My apps are awesome. <laughs> so um, let's look at some code. Oh, there's that, ex there's that extend active model naming. This is what I get for splitting slides based on IRC conversations. So um, the cool thing about active model is, it, like I keep on saying, is that it gives you, it's just a, basically a set of helpers that you probably should be using, but you don't have to use. Here's a good example for something that I don't want to do. If you want easy, easy, easy errors on your, on your models, all you need to do is, actually you don't need any more code than this. Um, these eight or so lines of code, including the spaces, make sure you include the spaces, will give you real errors and it'll give you an active record error object that you can work with inside of your form on your, on your pages. And the cool thing is, because you, now you have errors, you can do validation. So let's talk about um, cereal boxes. Um, when I was young, I didn't eat cereal. I still don't like cereal to this day, but I like pictures of cereal boxes. So let's talk about serialization. Um, one of the cool things, another cool thing that Active Model gives you is, is the ability to serialize to JSON. Um, I hate um, taking some object and converting it to JSON or XML or anything else. Once again, Active Model gives you this. And notice that all you need to do here is an include. And then say what your attributes are. And look at this. You, you set it to um, you use the dot, uh, to JSON method. And you automatically get JSON out of this. So next up will be um, validation. Um, I will give someone $5 if you can tell me why I use a pink van to talk about validation but I don't remember right now, so I have no idea why I use this. <laughs> a pink, and actually it's like a pink short van too, so I don't know what's going on with these pictures. So it, it is a pink short bus, isn't it? It's IRC again. It's, no, this is not IRC. This might have been a little it's bit of home time. 
This might have been a little smoky smoke time or something. I don't know what this was. So, um, validations. Um, once again, notice that the theme with active model is include, extend. They give it all to you. So let's say if you want to include active model, if you want to have validation, this is the this actually is the least amount of code that you need to do validations. And the cool thing about this example is that I basically cut and pasted from the example that in the examples in the um, in the source. And it, notice it works. Well, notice what this gives you with pretty much you know only four lines of valid or five lines of validation code. You can actually get rid of people who have the last name to start with Z because we don't like people with the last name to start with Z. And, and because you have validations, you can do a whole, whole bunch of other active record esque things with your um, with your models. So let's see what else we have here. So here's the um, here's the peril of giving a thirty minute talk. Um, how long does it take to give a thirty minute talk? Um, for me, if I was going to do active model, it'd probably take me an hour and a half. But um, because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take, and my wife is not a good, she didn't want to sit down for 20 minutes for me to talk to. Actually, the third time I actually did this talk for her, she got kind of bored with it. So what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to gloss over everything else. But I'm going to tell you that active model gives you introspection. It gives you observers, and it allows some dirty objects. So you can actually see if you have changes. Um, one cool thing about um, the internet these days is that we have a great thing called Flickr, and they allow me to download all these pictures for free, and um, with attribution, of course, so I put my attribution here, and, and here is me, I'm Brian Wilds, um, I blog there, I Twitter up top, and that's it. <laughs> with that portion of the talk. So, um, yeah, I actually, um, that's it with slides. I actually don't like slides, I'd rather just talk. So, um, here's a, here's a um, so you're gonna ask, hey Brian, why did you want to use active model? Why are you pursuing this in your off time? And I'll tell you, it's because um, I wanted to create a soundboard. You know, you know the soundboard, you go yeah. on the internet, you press it and it makes funny sounds. This is what I wanted to do. But not only did I want to do a soundboard, I wanted to use Redis. So I said, I'm going to make a soundboard in Redis. And not only am I going to make a soundboard in Redis, I'm going to store the binary object in Redis. Why not? You know? So let me show you why I created this talk. So um, notice we have HTML5 here, rounded corners, <laughs> text shadow. This right here is a Web 2.0 app. You can start this up right now. Let's get some VC. We are in San Francisco. <laughs> so what I all wanted to do was um, add new sounds to my app. So let me let me put this. No more slides for you guys. All right. And all I wanted to do was add new sounds and give them a name. Uh, let me see. What we call this one? We'll call this the chicken head sound. You know what a chicken head sounds like? Anyone in this room besides Seth over there? I know Seth knows what a chicken head sounds like. Um, like would you cut it off? No, chicken head. You know what a chicken head is. <coughs> so we, we're going to drag a chicken head. Oh That's what a chicken head sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to our desktop here. We'll drag over our chicken head MP3, and we'll create a sound. And all we're doing here is we're uploading it. Notice that um, I can tell you, I swear to God to you, that behind the um, scenes here, um, this is stored in Redis, the whole thing. There's no file system. There's no there's no MySQL. As a matter of fact, it's not the same have MySQL. But let me get, since I have like a couple more minutes here or a couple more seconds, let me talk, let me ramble a little bit about Rails. Um, so I was doing a sound app in Rails. And one thing you'll notice that when you're doing a sound app in Rails, um, you're going to want some content ranges because you're going to want to know, because when you're going to have a slide that goes back and forth, so you're going to want to ask for the beginning of the app or the end of the app. Um, Rails doesn't support that. Somebody please write a middleware that does. So what we have here is now is HTML5 and audio tag that's actually streaming live from our app, from Redis, not hitting the disk. But you know what? We can do better than that. How about, um, for, for the people who like classics, let's put in, um, let's say, crazy sounds. And let's drag another song over there. 
Um, anybody familiar with this song? <laughs> and that's it. So you'll notice what's happening here is um, Safari is loading this, maybe. It's, it's actually, it's, I've noticed it's hit or miss, but we'll click on the, we'll do the chicken head one in a second. And actually, let's just do one more since I have a little more time. Right, Josh? Okay. Yeah, I have a little bit more time here. Let me find my mouse and let's drag one more over. And for this one, um, since I, I really do, there we go. I really do like hip hop. Um, there's a theme song. We'll just call this one hip hop. And I will give. I'll buy lunch for someone tomorrow at lunchtime downstairs. Um, <laughs> if you can actually identify that song as it comes up. So this is all I wanted. I wanted an internet soundboard. And actually, not only did I want an internet soundboard, I wanted an internet soundboard that worked on my iPad. And, and using these technologies, these Web 2.0, HTML5, CSS3 things, I was actually able to get this app working on my iPad. And let's hear the fruits of my efforts. And I'm really done this time. So um, thank you, guys. Anyone can identify it yet? Besides that, he doesn't count. All right, right there. You got it. All right, thanks, you guys. And I'm done.